Well, hey there, the internet. Back for another driver commute of the uh, very late teach thought, 30 day teacher reflecting, blog, bloggy, challenging, wowingy. Today I'm doing day number 26. Day number 26, what are my three go to sites for, you know, when I need information and resources? So, my three go to sites. Number one, definitely uh, Twitter. Twitter. Uh, Twitter's got pretty much something for everybody and everything. But honestly, the source of the best, most customizable professional development for education. And not just like teaching strategies, but also teaching content. I mean, pretty much you can find anything. Um, that's where I've learned the most about flip class and stuff that I find on Twitter with the flip class hashtag. Um, PBL, there's a lot of good information on there. I haven't begun to comb through as much as I would like to at this point in the year. There's also there's some really good scientists out there um, posting a lot of stuff. Ann Oyster Rider is a plant cell biologist. She posts a ton of stuff on Twitter, a lot of really cool research. For example, did you know that the Golgi apparatus is attached to the endoplasmic reticulum? Because I didn't even know that. And in science textbooks, it's totally not ever drawn that way. And there's even a whole chat called a stew side chat where a scientist uh, chat on a Twitter chat with a hashtag stew side chat with like a student and scientist. They just have a talk about, you know, science and scientific research. It's awesome. So yeah, Twitter still, still the best thing. Uh, Google actually, I, I find a lot off of Google and uh, it's, it's the image search. So I have a lot of content information that I know. Uh, but some of the more powerful presentation techniques would involve utilizing images. And Google Image Search is a great way to find like a ton of images that I can throw up in class in lectures or in flip videos or even just, you know, throw up in class and we have a discussion of it. So, yeah, Google Image Search is super useful, I think, really for everybody, but especially for teaching science. And then my third site, my go to is YouTube. There's a lot of like YouTube has just so much stuff on it, but there's so many good educational resources on YouTube now. The fact that some school districts still block it, mine included, up to like two years ago, is preposterous. And there's still this YouTube education, like YouTube EDU, which just has like all educational content. Some of the best ones for that I've found for teaching science, uh, Veritasium. That guy's amazing. He actually has a PhD in physics education and wrote his dissertation on teaching physics using videos. So his videos are really, really good for a lot of physical science and not just limited to physics where you can use it like an intro level, like for Ohio's freshman, like physical science course. And there's a lot of good stuff that he used like in geology as well, some of those physical science concepts that are applied in geology or meteorology or oceanography. And then a crash course in SciShow are two really great ones uh, under Hank Green. I'm sure most of you are more familiar with his brother, John Green, the author. But John and Hank, uh, they do Vlogbrothers, which is awesome and entertaining. But then they also have a bunch of educational channels. Crash Course is a good one. Hank has one for uh, biology, I think another one for chemistry that are super useful. Um, and then he's also got SciShow that talks about like recent stuff happening in science and brings in even some research that's really nice. Does it look like I'm talking to myself? That's okay, you're allowed to. And uh, Paul Anderson has a lot of great flip class videos for biology that if nothing else are useful for me to see, okay, here's, here's a way that I can take this whole lecture that I have and condense it down, or if I'm running short on time, I can curate some videos off of those places for the kids to watch, or even give them uh, the kids options for additional resources and additional perspectives. So those are my three main go-to sites. Uh, what do you guys think? What sites do you find very useful, especially for learning? Even if you're not in education, you know, lifelong learning. What sources on the web do you use to learn? Thanks for watching, everybody. Make sure to put your comments and or video responses in the comment and video response areas.